Oh, welcome to another Memphis Monday, uh, Memphis Monday 75, I believe. But anyway, if uh, you'd like to see how I made this nice little uh, Windsor side chair, bow back side chair, you're in luck. You're at the right place. So stay tuned. Well, we're not going to get anything done if we don't get uh, knock off the chatter and get to work. Let's go over that prototype and take a look at it. The heart of the chair. Um, if you don't get this right, nothing else will work because the back is connected to it and the legs are connected to it. So here's the stock for the legs or for the uh, for the seat. First thing we're going to do is uh, drill the holes in the seat that will receive the legs. On the legs, what we're going to do is is we want the legs to splay out at that angle right there. So all we got to do is figure out what that angle is. Turns out it's 14.5 degrees. And line the leg up on that sight line. Okay, the first uh, angled hole I'm going to put in will be the hole right here for the bow. Here's the uh, holding jig, and one thing I want you to notice is that the I've drawn the sight line, a reference sight line on the on the holding jig, and then lined it up on the sight line. Okay, here's my uh, here's my jig, and one last check for the for the angle. In my practice for this, I I've used a Forstner bit. A spade bit and a hole saw bit uh, to drill these holes and they all seem to work fine but I have this three-quarter inch auger bit I'm gonna try that and see if it works I, I switched to the hole saw bit because that auger bit was too aggressive as you saw here's a little trick uh, free of charge if you're gonna do uh, use one of these hole saws, get one of these with the, with the end that screws off, then you put it in a wrench like that and screw the thing out. Okay, here you can see that uh, the bow hole is at the correct angle and you can see that the, the bow line of sight is lined up with that line right there. Well, that auger, you saw that auger uh, just dig right in. It, it uh, went through this uh, aspen in about one second. So I'm using this hole saw, as I said. And there's the uh, back leg mortise, all uh, set in place and ready to go. I put the seat, I got the holes done and put the seat up on some dummy legs to make sure it's set right. The next job is to uh, carve the, the next job is to carve the seat. Well, our seat's done. You can see it came out real well. That Aspen works real good. There's our prototype seat. You can see they're really similar. Okay, next uh, operation is to make some legs for this bad boy.
I did one of the legs <clears throat> so I could uh, show you. I got these, I got this template here and I will draw lines on the, on the leg at uh, various places and then I'll use my parting tool to cut down to that depth and then make the profile. Okay, now you can see I got the uh, I got the depths all set. You can see that the there's a low point, high point, low point, high point, and I just connect the dots and swoop that out, swoop that out, make that little bevel, and then taper it down here. Okay, let's get to it. Alrighty, we got uh, we got two done. Let me do the other two, and we'll uh, fit these legs on the seat. I finished the legs, but I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, stringers on the bottom too. Uh, what I wanted to show you is my lathe setup. This is a portable a portable wooden rig I, I built up that I can put a tool rest, a wooden tool rest, in here at any height. Or any length I want and that's important because uh, that way I can go the entire length of the project uh, without moving my tool rest. I got the legs uh, finished and put them in the uh, chair seat but I don't like it. The splay on the uh, on the back legs is only about five degrees. The splay is how far it leans out that way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these two holes here, these two holes right here, and I'm going to plug them and resand it and re refigure some different uh, splay angles here. Say I'm. Uh I'm going to plug the holes, this is what I mean. I have a, a plug maker and I just cut some plugs that were exactly three quarters of an inch and put them in there. I got the new uh, splay and rake on these, uh, on these new back legs. I just increased the splay just a little bit. You're not supposed to have as much uh, a rake and splay on the back legs because they, the back legs carry all the sitter's weight. Okay, so I guess the next, uh, next operation is to install these uh, what are called stretchers. To keep this thing uh, from moving around while I'm uh, trying to install the stretchers, I built this little assembly jig. All it is is once I got the legs the way I wanted them, I drilled angled holes where the feet go, and so the feet go down in these uh, little holes and keeps the whole thing stable. Okay, here's the uh, side stretcher, and it's going to go in just like this. I don't know if you can see it, just like that. And I want these tenons here to be uh, perfect. Let me show you how I do that. Okay, I'm using a, a, a plug cutter. 
it's the same kind of cutter that I used uh, when I redid those holes in the top up there. Uh, but you can also use it to uh, cut tenons. Works. Here's how it works. And there you have it, a perfectly cut 5 8 inch tenon. It's smooth, even, and perfect. So let's cut the holes uh, for the, or let's cut the mortises for the tenons. I'm cutting the uh, center uh, stretcher, and I wanted to give you a kind of a picture of the setup here. See that, that that drill bit's going in right in the center line of the side stretcher, and the drill is lined up with the target on the other side. Let's look at it from the other angle here. You can see that the drill is. is intersecting that uh, those side stretchers at about 12 degrees. Well, you saw me uh, sanding off those wedges. Pretty satisfied so far with our uh, project. The uh, chair assembly jig is working great. Okay, up, up here on the uh, prototype, the next thing we're going to do, put this back on here. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't done the back slats yet the spindles. Um, I've got to cut those to size, but before I cut them to size, I got to install this bow here. So let's get to work on the bow. I got the uh, bow on there, turned out okay. Next, uh, next thing we got to do is we got to we got to make the we got to make the spindles. That's these things right here. Got to make seven of them. I'll probably make about eight or nine in case we mess one up. That'll be the next thing. Let's do it. You just saw me uh, rounding over the edges of those stringers. I, uh, I got one of the stringers in, the center one. Let's go over and uh, look at the lathe setup. Here's the lathe setup. I've got a line marked right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's about one third up. I'll taper back from that line this way uh, down to five eighths of an inch. And then I'll taper forward uh, from this line to the top and and the top up here will be three eighths of an inch.
Okay, I already drilled the uh, I already drilled the hole through the top. Now I need to uh, drill the hole in the bottom. What I'm doing here is fitting it in the socket on the bottom, and then I'm marking it at the top how deep it's going to go in. Because I only want this I only want this mortise on this uh, stringer to go in the uh, to be as long as it needs to be and no longer. I showed you a three quarter inch uh, tendon cutter. This is the uh, three eighths inch version. Let me show you how it works. What I'm doing is, as I make these uh, spindles, I'm kind of fitting them as I go along, which is, uh, I mean, you have, it means you have to go through this headache more than once, but I figure I need to practice. Like I said before, you can, uh, you can get the How you doing, Poochie? <laughs> you can get the uh, holes lined up, the 3 8 hole on the top and the 5 8 on the bottom, using this uh, extra long drill bit here. I'm going to take it a step further this time because the drill bit, bit reaches. And I'm going to start this hole. I'll give you a close-up on that. I'm not, not going to drill this too deep. I'm just going to drill it just to kind of get the hole started. I got that hole started, now I'm gonna, I'll try to copy that angle with my 5 8 inch bit. If I can get everything together here, we'll take it apart and get ready for glue up. I got the dry fit up uh, complete. Uh, the next uh, thing is <clears throat> I'm going to take it all apart and put some wedge slots in the bow and get the glue out and do some glue up. Here what I'm doing is taking off about a half an inch off the back legs. Well, there's our little Windsor uh, bow style uh, side chair. Got hard maple spindles, soft wood uh, for the seat. In this case, I used aspen. A steam bent 
bow out of uh, oak. I think it's red oak. You're supposed to use uh, white oak, but I didn't have any. And our spindles are also made out of uh, oak. The bow is held in place by uh, wedges. Legs are held in place by wedges. And overall, I think, uh, I think it turned out uh, at least acceptable. <coughs> well, that'll do it for another Memphis Monday. I hope you uh, got some takeaways out of uh, building our Windsor chair. Um, next week, we will we'll, uh, be putting a special finish on it. Uh, there's this uh, kind of paint called uh, milk paint. It's kind of a traditional paint. And we'll be putting a couple of uh, coats on it and sanding it down, and it looks really good. So get excited for next week, and uh, make sure you're back next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for watching.